The first step in taking images with Maxim DL is to connect the camera. So you just come up to the toolbar and select the camera control window icon, which will bring up the camera control window. And you go to Setup Camera, and there's a pull down list which will give you all the different options, different cameras. Right now I've got a uh, Starlight Express camera hooked to the computer, so I would choose SX Universal and it does notice the camera, SXVH16. This camera does not have a guider, so you wouldn't choose anything there. You've got different options, of course, if your camera does have a guider, or if you are using a guider. Hit OK. This camera is not using any filters right now, but if you were using a filter wheel, you would go to Setup Filter. Under the pull-down menu, choose whichever filter wheel you are using. Make sure the filters were set up correctly. The defaults will be red, green, blue, luminance. If you have something like an H-alpha filter in there, you could select filter 5 and type that in. We'll cancel that because we don't have a filter wheel at the moment. And then we'll just hit connect. And everything is looking happy. If you have a cooler on your camera, if it has an active cooling, like an S-Big camera or an Apogee camera, you would select on for the coolers. With the Starlight Express cameras or a QHY8, uh, the cooling is automatic and there's no need to, to turn that on. Once you've connected to the camera, the next step is to go to the Expose tab and this is where you're going to set the camera to take exposures. Cool new feature of Maxim DL5 is that you can have exposure presets. This means you can have different camera settings for different applications. For example, for finding objects you may have one setting, for focusing you may have another setting, and for taking images you may have a third setting. And what you can do is modify the existing settings or create your own. So for the first step we'll, we'll modify an existing setting. Say we're going to use this camera to find a star, which typically would be about a one second exposure, is sufficient for that. And we want to set to continuous, because when you're finding you want the exposures to continue going while you're looking for your object. Under options, move this over so we can see the options, I've got it set for no calibration, because I'm planning on using this camera with Hyperstar, and so I don't need to take a dark frame. And if you, if your camera did have a, a built-in shutter and you did want to take a dark frame, you would select simple auto dark. In this case, we'll leave it at no calibration. The bending is set to three, and the reason for that is that it gives you a lower resolution image, but with higher sensitivity and a faster readout, so it's perfect for finding an object. If we want to save these presets, just click on the triangle to the right of the exposure preset pull-down menu and select update current preset and now that's been saved. Now let's say for focusing we want a different setup. Pull this down, select focus and maybe we want to do a two second exposure with binning one by one so we have higher resolution and we're set to have a subframe and for the mouse to select the subframe which is just means that when you take the full image you can select a region around one star so you get a very fast download at high resolution in order to focus and again this is probably going to be on continuous under options we're going to select no calibration again and same thing update current preset and that'll save our focus preset to create your own exposure presets just select the characteristics you want for your exposure so for example, maybe we want to do a 30 second exposure. We don't want to use a subframe. We want full resolution binning. We want a single shot. And this would be a good way to take a, a relatively short exposure to see if the object you were imaging was framed correctly, or if you're doing hyperstar imaging, it's a long enough exposure to pretty much take an image of the object and be done with it. So, once you've got the settings the way you like, click on the triangle and select Save as New Preset. Give it a name. We'll call this Test Exposure. Hit OK, and that becomes one of your exposure presets.
To capture a sequence of images in Maxim DL5, select Autosave in the Expose tab, and then click the Autosave button, which will open the Sequence window. And there's a few things to set in here, and this is where we're going to tell the t computer how we want to take our sequence of images. The first thing to do is to give your sequence a file name. So let's say we were going to take a picture of the Orion Nebula. You might call it, cleverly, Orion Nebula. And we've got slot 1 selected. That means we're going to use one type of exposure for our sequence. We've selected light frame as opposed to a darker or flat light frame is just your standard exposure. Since we're only using one slot, one type of exposure, there's no need to append a suffix to it, so you can leave that blank. Exposure is where you tell the computer how long you want the individual exposures to be. So let's say we wanted to take 30 second exposures. Our binning is set to one by one, full resolution. And repeat is where you tell the computer how many individual frames you want to take. Let's say we want to do 10. It now tells us that the estimated duration is going to be 5 minutes. We're taking 10 30 second exposures, 300 seconds, 5 minutes. Under Options, you want to set Save Image Path and go to wherever you would like to save your files and select a folder or create a new folder. Here we're going to save it in the Hyperstar folder. Hit OK. And now our sequence is set up. Most of the other features are for more advanced imaging. We'll go into those in more detail shortly. But for now, for most purposes, you can leave those at the default settings. Hit OK. And when you click the Start button, your autosave sequence will begin. Now we'll look at how to set up a autosave sequence when shooting with a monochrome camera and a filter wheel. Make sure autosave is selected and click on it. Give it a file name. In this case, we'll say we're shooting the Orion Nebula again. And in this case, we want to open up four slots for the four different filters we'll be using. And the first filter is the luminance filter. The second filter is red. The third filter is green and fourth filter is blue. In this case, because you're using four different slots, you want to append a suffix to each of the images so you can identify them later. In this case, we'll just use L, R, G, and B. For exposure time, maybe we want to take 10 minute exposures, so we'll put in 600 seconds for each of the exposure times. And when shooting LRGB, you normally want to bin the luminance one by one at full resolution and bin your color images two by two in order to increase the sensitivity of the camera when you're shooting through the filters. And you might want to take, say, ten luminance exposures and three of each color exposure. Since you're auto-guiding with uh, this type of camera with as long of an exposure, you'll typically want to dither the images, which will offset each image by a random number of pixels in order to avoid stacking bad pixels or hot pixels later when you combine the images. So it's a better way to get noise reduction. And we'll say dither via the guider and maybe a maximum deviation of 8 pixels. Hit OK and you're ready to take your sequence.